We're living inside of a matrix. Now, what is the matrix made of? It's made of light. How do we know this? Through the Large Hadron Collider. You smash particles together and atoms together. We know that they emit light. We know that at the deepest level, everything is made of light. When you're not looking at matter, it right. operates as a wave, a wave of light, a wave of potentials. So we know now that we are all immersed, fully immersed inside of a matrix of light. And it goes deeper than that. Where did this matrix come from? Where is it being broadcast from? Scientists in a laboratory discovered how to make an eighth dimensional quasi crystal. And then they pointed this quasi crystal in a particular angle, which cast down a fourth dimensional quasi crystal. And when they put that in a particular angle, it created a sphere. And that sphere is what we're living in, a sphere of light matrix. We're living in the shadow of a higher dimension. And this this dimension that we're in, this universe that we're in that's made of this fractal holographic light, it is um, probably not base reality at all. We're probably not even close to base reality. We are confronted with the profound notion, as we venture into the depths of understanding the universe, that the laws and numbers defining its existence could have fundamentally been entirely different. Much like a programmer meticulously designs protocols and rules for a system, the universe operates under a framework dictated by its inherently predetermined set of properties and patterns. Consider the intriguing scenario, where the mass of an electron or the speed of light could have been different values. In such a universe, the fabric of reality would unfold in a manner vastly distinct from our own. The very foundation of atoms, molecules, and the interactions between particles would be altered, leading to a cosmos entirely foreign to our current understanding. Take, for instance, the delicate balance between electromagnetic forces and gravitational forces. The precise values of fundamental constants, such as the gravitational constant or the charge of an electron, shape the dynamics of celestial bodies from the smallest particles to the grandest galaxies. What if these constants were tweaked ever so slightly? Would galaxies form differently? Would stars ignite or explode under different circumstances? The possibilities are as vast as the cosmos itself. Scientists and their theories in the different fields of science are trying to figure out how the rules of the universe work. But they should be trying to figure out what caused those rules to exist in the first place, and what determined the reach and influence of these rules. What decided that the speed of light in a vacuum should be 299,792 kilometers per second? If it were 10 times faster, it would be roughly 297,920 kilometers per second. If it were three times slower, it would be around 99,930 kilometers per second. What decided that electrons should orbit the nucleus? If electrons didn't orbit protons in the nucleus but immediately collided with them, atoms as we know them wouldn't exist. This would completely change the structure of matter and the universe as we understand it. What determined the expanse of the space between electron shells in the nucleus? If it were larger, atoms could have been as big as grapefruit rather than being microscopic. Various Nobel Prize winning physicists have realized that they have been looking at the universe all wrong when they limit it to only the things that manifest in three-dimensional space and exclude consciousness. In quantum mechanics, there is a concept of superposition where something can be in two or more states or in two or more dimensions at once, and the act of observation collapses the superposition into one of the two states or dimensions. Erwin Schrödinger was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1933 for his theories and equations in quantum mechanics. But the famous Schrödinger box is not just about the box and a state of what's inside the box. It's also about consciousness, the living observer. Thus, at its most fundamental level, the universe is the existence of a medium, a state, and an observer, the components, frequency, and consciousness. I will give $10,000 to anybody who can prove me wrong here. So, reading through declassified CIA files, they basically state that brain waves can turn into particles just like a radio wave turns into a photon, which is the wave-particle duality proven by many scientists in the quantum mechanics slit experiment. Turns out this explains the whole universe, in a way, far beyond most people's comprehension. I'm gonna explain it in my best layman's terms. Stick around for maybe two minutes, and this will make sense. So, going through some declassified documents on warp drives, which fold space and time around themselves. Picture yourself existing in the universe. Then picture your future. Say it's a kitchen, then your present, the bedroom, and the living room, is the past, like your house. But they're all moving by a default of nature, 
and intersecting at different points. When viewed from a higher dimension or a higher state of consciousness, you exist in a superposition of all these states and all these places. Consequently, the universe we observe is merely a holographic reflection of the true universe. So, time, matter, electromagnetism make us up as living beings. But we as living beings are fragments of the universe that have attained consciousness and are now observing parts of itself from within itself. What the heck is a hologram universe? First, just understand how dimensions work. If you had an ant walking on a perfectly flat table that it can never leave, then that's 2D space. It could never know you exist because it can't perceive you beyond that table. So you dump a bucket of water on it, and it's like their whole world flooded as an act of God. It's interesting to think about, but just follow me. Us living in the 3D could never perceive from the fourth or fifth dimensions or any such superposition. But we have proof that higher dimensions exist because we have space and time and ways to manipulate it. So now we look back to the CIA files, and they show even in the 19th century that physicists knew that 3D was not enough to prove the fundamentals of consciousness and biological life in nature. And they go on to say that it's more so our consciousness projecting thoughts out that affect our reality. The universe observing itself collapsing the superposition of various states into select states and dimensions. How does that work and why does this make sense? They're actually all very interconnected. And again, really weird that the oldest history we have, people knew this, just look at the flower of life overlaid onto patterns within quantum physics, which is used to measure properties amongst fundamental forces, frequencies, states and particles. Which is why the flower of life is considered a sacred symbol in various spiritual traditions, and is believed to represent the interconnectedness of all life, and the underlying geometric structure of the universe as everything is connected and affected by the observer. This is the shape that water takes on when it interacts with sound and light frequencies. And what is the universe at its most fundamental level? Mirroring fundamental frequencies and harmonics, akin to stage quantum features and Fibonacci patterns found in nature. Cymatics reveals captivating geometric patterns arising from the interaction of sound frequencies with mediums like water or sand. These patterns, shaped by resonance and harmonics, echo the underlying frequencies in tangible forms, exhibiting self-similarity and fractal-like structures reminiscent of natural phenomena. Thus, cymatics offers a visual testament to the interconnectedness of fundamental patterns and frequencies across different scales, highlighting the beauty and harmony inherent in nature's design. So, with sound, light and water you can see temporary versions of these patterns. But what is temporary? Is temporary one second or five second or five years or sixty years? Are we just temporary amalgamations of chemical bubbles that emerge, exist, pop and disappear within timescales that are essentially a few seconds to the rest of the universe? Are we just chemical patterns in water, supported by energy waves? This property of water makes it the ideal carrier of life's waves and consciousness. We look at life as carbon-based, but we should actually look at it as water-based because all of life existed in water for billions of years, and the bodies of most living beings consist of over 80% water. So, the ancients in Egypt, India, Asia, South America, and Mexico all knew something we didn't, and they figured it all out with circles and spiral Fibonacci sequences seen throughout the fractals of nature. Water isn't only important in stable state liquid form, but it is also important in its ionic form. Overall, the balance of H plus and O ions is critical for the proper functioning and stability of biomolecules, cellular processes, and microbial communities in biological systems. In biology, including DNA and microbiology, the concentration of H plus hydrogen ions, also referred to as protons, and O hydroxide ions, plays a crucial role in maintaining the pH balance of cellular environments. The pH level affects the structure, function, and stability of biomolecules, including DNA. DNA stability is impacted by H plus ions, which can neutralize some of the negative charge of the DNA molecule, potentially leading to denaturation or unwinding of the DNA double helix. Enzyme activity, essential for various cellular processes, is influenced by pH levels, as enzymes often have optimal pH ranges for their function. Additionally, the pH balance within cellular compartments is crucial for normal cellular function, including processes like protein synthesis, metabolism, and cellular signaling. 
while microbial growth and survival also depend on specific pH requirements. Because of water, DNA, another manifestation of the golden ratio, can flourish in the physical universe. Essentially, it is only now, give or take a few billion years in the presence of water, that the universe finds itself stable enough to create and sustain a single continuous living biological molecule that can exist uninterrupted for billions of years. DNA was one of the main resonant molecular structure, information pathway, or geometrical pattern, to successfully unlock the fragments of consciousness and sentience encoded within the fractal universe, where DNA is a molecule that is continuously being replenished, replicated, and added to for billions of years. But most of us fail to realize that DNA is not like a piece of paper that was only written on once, that then lay unchanged, or that regresses and degrades into nothingness. Instead, DNA should be seen as a vast unbroken and uninterrupted code that has been taking input from the universe and giving output to the universe for billions of years, such that although individual organisms die and their brains decay, and their specific unique DNA sequence quickly ends, with the existence of their surviving offspring, observation and consciousness will continue, hence the unending pattern of the flower of life. The government knows it, but most of us don't because they've kept it hidden. And frankly, it's pretty damn confusing until someone explains it all. But if you stick around, this will make sense. So picture something like this being the universe we live in, projecting light inwards. Our consciousness would be a part of that, because we're creating particles with our thoughts and the act of observation. A simplified way to look at it is we live in a five-dimensional universe, and as such, we live in a hologram of light, and we produce electromagnetic impulses through our brain, through our heart, that can directly impact and influence our reality. If we're all focused on something bad, something bad is gonna happen. Okay, follow me. If everybody loved more, it would directly change this. Because as a collective, we have more power than as a singular being. As a collective, we represent a large cross-section of the universe. However you'd like to word it. In the 80s, the CIA discovered that you can reach higher levels of consciousness. The flower of life is a perfect example. Some of the most guarded sacred knowledge in any ancient culture you look at, and mathematically maps out how dimensions work. It explains how life came from the interior of the earth, how particles are formed, and more importantly, how a wave can turn into a particle. I mean, everything is a frequency, everything's a vibration, it's a wave. The sun shines because of vibrations, atoms exist because of vibrations, magnetism is vibrations, heat is vibrations, electricity is movement and vibrations and oscillations. Our consciousness is a wave. Why couldn't you just think something into existence? The way we understand time is linear, because we created it that way. All I want is somebody to just come into my comments and explain why this doesn't work. If you can bring me some science that shows why you can't think something into existence. In the same way, a radio wave turns into a particle. Why can't your brain waves? And more importantly, why did ancient civilizations know about this? The emerald tablets. They're 40,000 years old. Going over quantum mechanics.